Okay, a hiccup has just run into the cave, which mm, was always a bit worrying going into a large cave <coughs> in Hiccup's world. It wasn't a wall at all, it was a dragon. He was running straight full tilt as hard as he could towards a truly immense sleeping sea dragon, so huge that its head filled the entire cave uh, in front of him. Hiccup put the brakes on. He skidded abruptly, screeching on the ice, slid forward, arms waggling desperately, trying to stop before he bumped into the thing because he really did not want to wake it up. Just shutting the window there because it's a bit chillier than I thought. Um, and he came to a halt just in the nick of time, a feet away from the dragon's sleeping chin. Hiccup stopped, but the ticking thing attached to Hiccup's wrist did not stop. <laughs> Momentum carried the ticking thing up from the ice where it had been mancing along um, Hiccup, sailing over Hiccup's head and on and on and up and landing sharp and precise on the closed eyelid of the sleeping dragon, as if it were politely but firmly knocking on the door. Oh brother, oh brother, oh brother, whispered Hiccup, reeling the ticking thing in and around his wrist. As the eyelid fluttered, it stayed down. Oh, look at the size of that eye. <sighs> It's a big one. Um, I fluttered it, stayed down as Hiccup back slowly away. Please stay close, please stay close, please stay close. And then the eye opened. Mm. In the darkness of the cave, it was like turning on a great yellow searchlight and Hiccup was blinded by the glare. He, how quickly the hunters become hunted. Hiccup was now running towards the polar serpents, confusing them considerably. And they too realised that the, that bright light was in fact the eye of an enormous, no longer sleeping dragon, yowling and screeching like a pack of wolves. The polar serpents came tumbling and someone was insulting to a stop um, and started to turn to run back the other way with Hiccup belting after them, arms and legs going like pistons. <gasps> and behind them, the terrible beginnings of a great rumbling roar. The American Queen too had passed from, on from the iceberg now and was some type of distance away and Kamikaze was trying to get it to turn around. Fish looks over his shoulder to see the entire pack of polar serpents shooting out of the great ice cave like arrows shot from a bow, followed by Hiccup running flat out. What's going on? asked Fish Legs, knowing that whatever it was, it was very bad news. The flat iceberg stretched out in front of Hiccup, far too big for safety. There was nowhere to go, no trees to hide under, no rocks, no tunnels for shelter. So there really wasn't any point in running, but the young Viking and the polar serpents all ran nonetheless, hoping to be put off to it off their desk for one moment, even one second. But Hiccup's horror, two great yellow eyes had slowly appeared in the darkness of the mouth of the, of the cave, of the cave. Whatever it was, it was huge. Something like a moving mountain with wings exploded out of the cave. The cliff erupted into a volcano as snow as the something burst out of there. A great mass of raw energy, a roar of wild triumph screaming from its throat, sending, sending snow and ice exploding. Look at the spines on its back compared to Hiccup. Big one, snow and ice spraying in all directions. It was so big it momentarily blotted out uh, the moon as it sailed through the air and landed screaming on the iceberg. Hiccup was running to us. So big was this thing that when the thing landed, it crashed through the entire iceberg, sending great slabs of ice and fountains of water shooting up into the air. And Hiccup and the polar servants were catapulted upwards. The polar servants ricocheted off in all directions like fireworks and up and up. Hiccup sailed over the surprise sinking monster's head across the sea up and towards the deck of the American Dream 2, where he just missed catching onto the rim of the boat with his flailing fingers and fell down the side of the boat and into the sea, where he would have remained if the harpoon that fish legs had shot earlier hadn't snagged him on the back of his waistcoat and dragged him along as if the boat had caused itself a fish. You see, sometimes the things that we do, even though fish legs is harpoon didn't work initially it did work in the end hand over hand it's always worth trying even when things think fell hopeless hand over hand hiccup heaved himself up the rope and kamikaze and fish legs hauled him up and onto the deck of the american dream too steaming westwards with its still sleeping crew and as he clambered dripping over the edge of the boat heart racing like a rabbit scarcely able to believe that he was still alive the machine he gasped and immediately ran to stop the <laughs> to stop to the stop the boat from sinking and scare away the monster sea, sea creature the machine. Help me get this got off it, fish legs. The two young Vikings dragged the dead to the world, Red Ronald, off the machine and Hiccup looked fearfully over his shoulder. The monster had disappeared underneath the broken remains of the iceberg. It had shattered. But was it 
It's imagination or could you see a racing shooting white line of water beginning to turn around and move back in their direction. They cut thrust his trembling feet into the pedals of the machine and circled them furiously, making the ridiculous trumpet thing <laughs> like the new well like a whirly gig. I thought we you said the machine was useless, painted fish legs. Well hopefully I was wrong, <laughs> so hiccup. Because otherwise we are dead. Even hiccup can be wrong sometimes. Full steam ahead, shouted Kamikaze, rushing back to the steering wheel of the boat, and the American Dream 2 surged away from the iceberg. I think it's working, panted Hiccup, but we only knew how the machine was working. Uh, but that white wake walker seemed to close down, flip, slow down and slow down, slow down, finally um, go, turn away. So whether or not Melbourne's machine could prevent a boat from sinking, it did seem that it was not quite as loopy as it looked, and it really could scare away a monster sea dragon. The massive sigh of relief, Hiccup turned and he looked back over his other shoulder to say, see the seven boats of wand wanderers boring away from them as quickly as possible in the other direction. Hey, said Hiccup in alarm. He showered fish legs with drops of seawater as he moved his arms at them. Fish legs take over and for thought's sake, don't stop pedalling. Hiccup swapped places with fish legs and ran down the deck shouting, don't leave us, what are you doing? Come and get us, what are they doing? Kamikaze, turn round and go after them. Are you crazy? Interrupted fish legs, what about that thing? We have to get out of there as quickly as possible. Oh, Hiccup was hoping to go off with the wanderers. What are you doing? Hiccup cupped his hands and shouted through the swiftly descending sea mist at the wanderers, fast disappearing in the other direction. Hiccup's heart sank. He couldn't believe the injustice of it. Of it. After all he had done, all that they had risked to save them from slavery, the wanderers were running away, abandoning them. Cards! yelled Hiccup over her shoulders. Yellow bellies, traitors! For a few minutes, Hiccup could still see Hiccup's grandmother standing straight and tall at the edge of her boat. And then she disappeared into the mist. <gasps> Chapter 13. They were in its territory now. Well, he did save those wanderers, though, so I think he's done a good job, but he's still on the way to America with Norbert the Nutchop who is going to wake up at some point.